Hello everybody, this is Betsy from Ideas Times 2 and I have a tutorial for you today. Uh, we will be making a junk journal folio. Um, this project was inspired by a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Um, I saw a picture of hers on Pinterest and I, I clicked on the link to try to get directions but it never really amounted to anything. Um, just that somebody had made these for gifts and so um, anyway I just saw that picture and I took off with it um, so I do appreciate that idea it, it's a very fun and simple project um, lovely for a little uh, hostess gift Christmas gift uh, stocking stuffer friend I mean it is it is a really really fun project um, um, I, so I don't have the folio with me right now because it was in our Etsy shop and it did sell. Uh, but you did see pictures a minute ago. So we are going to make one basically the same. Um, I used papers from nevermorecreations17.com and I'll leave her link down below. The kit is entitled Postage Due. And um, my previous video, you guys saw that I had used that kit as well. So the information is there as well. So... Anyway, let's just get started with this folio. So a few things you'll need are, um, to begin with, the, the base is a piece of very curdy, sturdy cardstock or file folder. Um, the size would be eight by eight and a half, so it doesn't have to be a huge piece at all. Um, some miscellaneous papers that you're gonna use to decorate your um, folio with. So just some, you know, some basic papers that you wanna use. A couple strips of fabric, um, eight and a half by, mm, let's see, eight and a half by about three inches, about. Um, I used a small envelope punch board. This is optional if you want to make envelopes, um, then this is a very handy tool to have. Um, I did put some eyelets and used my eyelet setter and um, a box cutter and a notepad that is roughly eight inches long. And it could be any width because we, we cut it down anyway. So unless you could find a three inch by eight inch notepad, which I don't know if that size is available readily or not, but anyway, so it's a notepad that we cut down basically. Um, some elastic for wrapping the junk journal. Mm that may be it. Glue and scissors for maybe trimming. I did use the scoreboard too, but there's only two score lines that we need, so it's it's not too bad. Anyway, so those are just the things. It's basically scraps of stuff with some tools. All right, so the paper, the heavy paper, heavy cardstock is eight inches by eight and a half inches. Once again, it only has two score marks. And that's all we need. Oops, I just dropped my box cutter. Um, two score marks. I'm trying to find them. Three and a half and four and a half. Okay, so the eight inch is up at the top. It's butted up against the side. And three and a half and four and a half. So three and a half mark all the way down. And four and a half mark all the way down. That is it for scoring. So we are done with that. <clears throat> All right. Um, let's see. Another thing that I like to do on these definitely is to round the corners. So I'll just need my corner rounder, which is right here. And I'll use the half inch size. Whatever type of corner rounder you're corner rounder you have. Maybe you just need to trace a little shape and then cut it and that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Okay, so now we have a rounded corners. Perfect. Okay, and then you can you can already see how the shape is going to happen, right? So it, you fold it on each score line and then you've got a one inch spine. And you already have a little booklet. So little skinny folio. Super, super cute. Okay, so the first thing I think we'll do is just um, decorate the front, and I'm only doing that so that this the fabric and the papers can all get situated before we do the outside spine. So we'll just do this first. <clears throat> Excuse me, I 
it's pretty early in the morning. I have a little craggy voice today. Um, so I had already cut these mats. What I'm going to do, let me show you, show you the plan, is to place these mats one on each side of the spine. So I will need to corner round those as well, since I corner rounded the cover. So let's do that. One of these mats is also for the back, and so I'm looking at them now, trying to decide what I want to be the front and what I want to be the back, or the, the inside cover, I should say, and the outside cover, back cover. I think I like this for the outside back cover, so I'm gonna save that. Um, so these, the size of these is three and a quarter inches by eight and a quarter inches, and you'll need three of those. They can all be the same, they can be different, and any colors, any papers that you use, you can make this look all sorts of ways. It's, it's a fun project to personalize. All right, so I'm gonna use this over here. Um, I think I will ink the edges too. I wish I would have thought of that earlier. I would have done this, but I didn't think of it. But just a little inking, just to give it a little, a little depth. All right, so I am going to glue this one on this side here. Da, da, da. Okay. Oops. All right, and then just center it, even it up a little bit, smooth it down. Make sure you're all straight. All right, and we'll do the same thing to this one. We're gonna corner around the two outside corners. Need to ink just a little bit. It's hard to do because this is just paper. It's not cardstock. So this can be paper or cardstock. I don't think it matters too much. It's not going to bulk up the book too much if you do use cardstock. It's fine. In fact, is it'll, you know, make the cover sturdy. But this is, just happens to be paper. All right, and then glue that on. And then we're going to reinforce the spine with a couple pieces of fabric, one on the outside of the folio, one on the inside of the folio, and we'll have a nice um, sturdy spine so the cardstock doesn't crack or anything like that. All right, so center this on where you'd like to have it. There we go. These are pretty much going to be covered up, but it's always nice to have a background. Um, to add more interest. Okay, so this is what's going to happen. I chose a brown. I could go either way. I could go either way. I really like... Let's mix it up. Let's do the brown on the outside. So we're going to do this off-white on the inside. Mm, now that I look at it, I'm not sure if I like it that much because you can definitely see the um, contrast between the light paper and the, okay, and the base, the cardstock base. So what I usually do when I'm adding fabric with glue, because you know, if you get globs of glue that it's gonna seep through the fabric and I don't like that look so much and so, um, what I usually do is put glue down, but then I'll smooth it out with my finger. So that there aren't any globs. And I have to have a, a towel handy for that because I, I hate having my fingers dirty. Alright, smooth it out as much as you can. So there's a nice even layer. And now it's starting to dry on me, so I better get cracking. Okay, and then center this. 
and then smooth it out. And I usually give it a peek on the ends to see, make sure it's, it's centered. And it looked pretty good. So that goes there like that. And I'm going to leave these, I'm going to actually leave this because I'm thinking I maybe cut that fabric too wide. Let me see. I did. I cut it a little too wide. So I'm going to trim this off a little bit. I like the frayed look, but I made it a little too wide. So there you go. I would not make it three inches. I would make it two and three quarters. And that should be about right. because we have to glue something down over here. I was getting carried away with my my measurements and I like the frayed look so I'm just gonna run over that with my fingers. Okay. Alright now we'll go ahead and install the notebook. So the note the notepad notebook notepad is placed here like this. So what we need to do is decorate the um, the top part here because um, I did get these from Sam's in case you're wondering I did get them from Sam's and um, I just cut it down. Okay so the way I cut it down is I'll bring I'll bring in a cutting mat like this one and I measure <clears throat> excuse me how much I want to cut off I'll use my metal ruler so you might have a a ruler with a metal edge or this one is just solid metal and you'll lay it down well so after you measure draw a line okay and then line up your ruler to the line and use your box cutter if you have an extremely sharp um, Oh, that's right, I dropped it on the floor. Um, if you have an extremely sharp craft knife or something with a, a bigger blade, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, I'm giving you a ride there. That was free. Um, if you have a, um, a craft knife with like a bigger blade, something more hefty, um, you could do it with that. But I prefer the um, box cutter, and I this is a Scotch brand. I bought this at Hobby Lobby, and it is... <laughs> It is truly amazing. I've cut down several things, including composition notebooks, and um, this thing is so sharp and really, really great. So after you draw your line, hold up your ruler and then just start cutting with your box cutter, and please, 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 please be careful. If you have some sort of guard here on your ruler, I mean, that's the best way to go, but I, I don't have that, so I'm just very, very careful. Hold your blade straight up and down and just repeatedly just drag it down against your um, ruler and it, you know, applying some pressure. Obviously, you're going to want to apply pressure and it cuts through. It is seriously not hard at all and it, if you have a nice sharp instrument like this, it just, it's like butter. It just cuts, cuts it right through. So that's the way I cut down um, notebooks. Just wanted to let you know on that. So we've got this. Um, I did try a box cutter and cutting down a notebook on my Tim Holtz glass mat, but please don't do that. It will ruin your glass mat. So it's very depressing <laughs> to think about that. I, I, uh, um, yeah, I scratched my glass mat, my expensive Tim Holtz glass mat. All right, so what I'm going to do here is cover that blue strip. I want to keep the blue strip on. Like, I'm not going to just rip it off or anything, but because I think it's partly holding the book together. So partly, I'm pretty sure. So I'm just going to glue decorative paper over the top of it. Make sure to get some glue on that little spine and then down here. and just glue that down and I did pre pre make this and inked it as well so it is three inches across and I have 
no clue. Did I write it down? No, I don't think I wrote it down, but it is approximately two inches and it won't matter like how far down it comes back here so okay so then just decorate that and you can put a little cluster here or you know rick rack or something like that you can make it more fancy but just for the video we'll just keep it plain all right the next thing the way i like to do the notebooks is to take my heavy cardstock or file folder whatever you have glue it glue two pieces down Especially with a long one like this, I would use two pieces. Most of the time I would can get by with one. But since this is very long, we're going to do two pieces. And I cut these. I cut these, let's see. Ooh, oh, I already got the measurements. So three inches by one and three eighths inches. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Does it? Three inches wide makes sense so yes three inches and then oh it's two mm -mm -mm, two and three eighths that's what it is i wrote it down wrong so two and three eighths inches wide three inches so two pieces of those so the idea is then we're going to slip this down in in underneath the belly bands and that will hold the notebook and at the same time if you want to make another notebook for it you can remove this and put your new one in Okay, so, and I did cover these with decorator paper just so it blends in more with the background. Okay, so you're thinking this is three inches wide and these are three inches wide. That's not going to work. Well, you are correct. So what we're going to do is cut this down probably a half inch on each side. It doesn't have to be exact. And I'm going to cut it up just until I reach that um, strip at the top, like that. And then I'm just going to cut these pieces, these extraneous pieces off. Because um, we want the belly band to be as wide as possible to hold this thing. <laughs> that went flying. Um, so that's why these are three inches, but it also we have to have room for the glue and holding it down. So this will be approximately two inches wide. It should, you should have plenty of room for putting that down. Okay. Now where to put these, you could just slap it down, but you need to, need to make sure that the top of that is down low enough so that the notebook doesn't stick up above the notebook. So I usually just eyeball it like that, lay it down, and then that's where I glue it down. So it looks to be about an inch above there. Okay, and then this one can go pretty much anywhere. Just two nice fat belly bands so that, uh, in fact is I'm going to leave a little mark so I remember where that was. Um, so for these just glue down the sides we want we want it to be open top and bottom this is probably the most complicated part and it's really not that complicated I'm trying to make sure i know where my fold is because you're going to want to center it side to side And glue that down. Little bead of glue on each side, and then just glue it down, making sure it's aligned pretty well with this one up here on the sides. <clears throat> Excuse me. Making sure that we're okay with our band. I'm just lifting that up just, just to take a peek at it. All right. And then, it's, it's probably a little early to do this, but I want to show you what it's going to look like. So you, you'll slip this down underneath. Slip it down underneath the second one. 
until you just feel that that pushing against the top and then there you've got your um, secure see how it's it's not moving side to side we've got a nice secure notepad in there and I'm going to take it out for now because this glue is so wet and then we'll we'll put it in later so now we've got our notebook all done the notebook part of it is notepad I keep saying notebook but it's really more like a notepad isn't it so notepad is done and I probably should have inked these two but it's it's fine they're gonna be covered up like 99 percent of the time so okay and then the next side this side here is going to have three envelopes and let me just show you so it'll be three envelopes I've already cut these out and I'll show you what I used in just a second okay it's gonna have the three envelopes on this side like that okay so we'll have a notepad here we've got envelopes which are basically pockets going this way so that's another thing I wanted to mention you could definitely have pockets you could just put pockets here three of them you could put two of them you could put just one big one and have like a bookmark in here or or something like that you could make um, like a larger sort of double pocket to make it more interesting and tuck some tags and stuff in there so I mean the possibilities are are endless whatever you'd like to do so the size of these um, envelopes is three inches by two inches and I did make them on my small envelope punch board the mini one which I found this at Tuesday morning um, they have a lot of We Are Memory Keepers uh, tools, and this is a great um, thing. I've used this a lot. I've used this a lot. So that's how I made them. You certainly don't have to, and you could just do the, the pockets, you know, just like the rectangular shaped pockets. All right, so what I'm going to do, I've already punched these out, and I've inked the edges. So I'm going to close up these envelopes. just a little bead of glue like that and all these papers were from Nevermore Creations 17 okay so now they're closing up and um, and then I just straight glue them on but I don't glue the whole thing I leave the the back of it as a pocket so easy easy to do all you do is just glue just like you would all oh, this this front is cute too bad I'm covering it up right uh, let me decide before I do this I'm gonna put the red one in the middle I think okay so the way you do this is on the front of the envelope just run a bead of glue along the sides and along the bottom and then you've got a pocket just like you would on a regular piece of paper okay now I didn't measure this at all I just eyeballed it Just once again, make sure that you're not interfering with your fold, and it looks it looks good. Okay, and then see. Normally, I think I would have done the middle one first, but I wasn't thinking. All right. Smack that one down. I think I think I made the spine to the spine fabric a little too wide. I normally wouldn't be gluing these right onto fabric, but I think it'll work out just fine, but you might want to cut that smaller. maybe one and a half inches one and a half inches that's might be better 
but it is going to work out. It'll be fine. Okay, so now we've got pockets. Um, you can, I, the one I'd made previously, I put some of this, this coral paper in there for a giant pop of color when you open it up. So I put little pieces of cardstock in there. You can put a little folded paper, a little piece of ephemera. Um, and then in the back, and I probably am not going to go over tags at all, but I put tags. So see, this is a pocket now, all three of these. And so what I had done was I placed two small tags with some fun twine at the top. I just tucked them in here, here, here and at the top and it stuck out a little bit at the top so that's the way to make that side the notepad side is done so this goes in here like this nice the next part is the junk journal so let's do that oh we can't do that yet we have to put our spine on the outside so the inside is decorated now we're going to decorate the outside these hang over, you can cut those off or just fringe them up, whatever you'd like to do. Um, the hangover of the fabric. I'm sorry, I was a little off frame there. Okay, so the plan is this piece of paper. So we're going to round the corners on the outside corners. I'm going to ink that up. Another thing I had done here is... Um, put a paper clip. I just hung a little paper clip off of each one to keep the flaps down. So that is another thing I did on that. <clears throat> it just makes it easier to open and close. You don't have to worry so much about those flaps. So I'm making these edges, this edge, well I guess these because there are four edges here. And I'm going to glue that down. So this is the front. So this is the back right here. Put a bunch of glue on it. And stick it down, centering it. Okay, the back is done. And now the front. So I'm gonna put the, the spine fabric on first and then this goes on top. So same thing with this spine. Let's go ahead and definitely get the spine part. Um, it's gonna overlap a little bit over here and here. So I'm just gonna spread that around. And I'm not, I'm not so worried about the bigger piece of fabric on this side. If you have a little corner that needs extra glue, it's no, be, no problem to go ahead and do that after. So now we have a nice little um, fabric spine uh, reinforcement there and on the inside we have it as well all right so the way I decorated the cover and I think I'll do it the same way is I tore this image um, from one of the papers and it's still a tad bit too wide so I'm gonna go ahead and rip just a just a little bit more off I just kind of eyeballed it before because I didn't have the booklet made yet and make this a little bit more like an oval rather than a rounded square. <laughs> it's like a rounded square kind of. Okay, and then this is kind of still a little bit lopsided, so I am going to, it's a little bit hard, but I want to see the image here. Okay, so I'm going to just make it come in. Oops, I ripped off her hair. I didn't mean to do that. It still looks okay. All right. She's going to go there. I'm going to ink these edges for sure because this paper has a white core. 
well, and it's white paper, so it's going to look white. Okay, so give that a little bit more of an aged look. That's going to go there, but before I glue that down, I am going to um, put a pop of color. So this matches her posies, and so I am going to give her a little accent color and and this color looks amazing with that brown so super excited that I had a good color for this so I am going to just randomly give this some color and I don't I don't necessarily need the color to go all the way around just just a few pops of color so We'll put, yeah, we'll put, we'll put this one down here like this, and I'm going to rip that corner off so it's not so obvious. Okay, and then glue that coral down here as well. It's, it's like down here and then it goes up the side. Whoops, I went up the wrong side. I put glue on the wrong side. Yeah, it went up like this. Mm, or did it? I think it did. Okay, like that. So now we've got this cute little, rip this off just a tiny bit more. And let's see. And then I had put, and I sort of liked it, I've, I've put some a little bit of cheesecloth, I think going up here like this. So I had, I had just inked this white cheesecloth to make it look a little tannish and there. So it just gives it a little interest, another little layer of stuff there. So I'm going to glue that on to the front. Okay, loving it. Okay, so that goes there. I'm going to tuck that, tuck that cheesecloth down underneath. It's sticking up a little bit right on the edge. Um, what I should have talked about is closures. Um, I simply wrapped this with sari silk, but you could you could um, before you put the before you put this decorator paper down here, you could actually install some ribbon or silk, or you can um, put an eyelet here and attach. The ribbon or silk put an eyelet here to attach the ribbon or silk and then tie it in a bow which is probably what i'll do on this one but um but if you wanted had wanted to glue it on you should have done it before this inside piece which i totally didn't tell you that because i didn't think of it earlier when i had made the first one i didn't even think about that and then i thought oh you know i could have actually glued that on or you can just wrap something around it, and that would be awesome too. You know, maybe I'll do that. I, I'm kind of thinking it would be fun just to wrap some string around it. I don't know. We'll, we'll, I'll decide that later. But it's basically um, done, except for the junk journal part. So let's go over the junk journal. So I have already made some pages to go in here, and so it's going to be attached to the spine with eyelets. I'm going to put eyelets in. The size of these pages you should cut will be, let me look, eight inches, so that's eight inches high, by six and a half inches wide, and then you fold them in half, so the pages themselves will be three and a quarter by eight. So you've got a little skinny journal here, which is perfect. All right, so I'm going to show you the eyelets, and then we'll probably be basically done. 
I put it on my 3 16 um, size and I'll just turn it over so I can see it a little bit better. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is mark it about a half inch or so from the top I'm gonna, and I'm just going to eyeball the center and do the same thing down here making sure that I know where the actual cardboard is or the cardstock I mean because if you go by the fabric if your fabric hangs over then you're probably going to make your hole a little bit too close to the edge. Punch my holes, and you're going through fabric, so you're probably going to have a little um, hanging chad there. So let's get those off. Okay, then you can set your eyelets. <laughs> I think. There we go. Sometimes hard to see where that. Okay, so there's one. Let's get this other one in and we'll show you the junk journal installation. Okay. Oops. I have a little piece of fabric that's in my way. I can't see it. There we go. All right. Get that done. So now I've got my two eyelets. And they, they did just fine through those layers. All right, so the next thing is to put some elastic so it's like a traveler's notebook with elastic and it's removable so if you get run through that junk journal and let me cut this the proper proper length here okay guys so this is about 16 inches or so or more that's 12 and 7 so about 19 inches of elastic so you're going to just thread it I'm, I'm having this as a decorative sort of element so I'm going to thread it through like that and tie it on the inside Normally you don't show so much elastic on a traveler's notebook, but um, I'm just adding a little decorative element there. Okay, tighten the knot and clip that off if you need to, and this is it. Okay, so the junk journal, um, normally I would make a pamphlet stitch. I don't want to bore you with that. Um, and, or... The other possibility is you can just tuck them under. I've received junk journals like this where it is under a string, but it's not actually pamphlet stitched. So um, I did, I can't remember how many pages I did on my other one. This one I just quickly put together six sheets of paper. So that's 24 sides, right? It looks like you could probably make it a little bit bigger without any problem. I can't remember how much, um, how many pages my other one had. So that's basically it. I am going to put an eyelet here and an eyelet here and attach some sari silk to, to um, tie a bow, a bow closure. But that's the basic um, junk journal folio. You've got your pockets here, your junk journal, 
which you can pamphlet stitch or not. Just, just leave the papers like this. And then, oh, I need to, we need to put this in. Come on, girl, get it, get with it here. A notepad, and you have a nice little folio. The other thing I did too, which I did not prepare for, but we can do it right now. We can do it right now. Is make a pen loop. So, for example, a pen with a clip on it. Just measure the size, kind of roughly like that. And it doesn't have to be a certain um, length like this. This is this is about three. Oh no, it's about an inch, inch and an eighth or so. And so you're going to make your pen loop. Just glue the edges of that together. And then glue it to the back of your notebook. And I kind of like to have the pen in there so that I get the right placement of this. And it should glue mostly on that cardboard piece. And bring it in as snug as snugly as possible so that it doesn't interfere with your spine. So it should hang like that. If you hang it sideways like that, it's going to take up more room. So just hang it so that the, the clip runs down through the back. So, and then slip it in and then we'll be done. I almost forgot the pen loop. I think that's, that's kind of a, a nice feature of this is the pen. So, and it, I can feel it's, it's pulling apart because I'm slipping it in too much, too early. Okay. Well, folks, I did cut it too wide. I did cut it too wide, so it should be, let me give you the me new measurement. <laughs> the reason why it's too wide is because it's going to interfere with the way that goes in. There we go. So that should be much, much better. Whoops, it goes on the top. There, you see all my mistakes. Three-fourths of an inch. So that it hits the, the top binding of this note, notebook backing here. Okay, now it should slip in there and it should not hit the pen holder. It should hit, yes, it should hit the top binding of the note, notepad. Okay, and then you're going to take your clip and my, my glue is wet, so you have to be careful. There, take your clip and just slip it on and you've got a nice little, nice little journal. I'll have to I'll have to think of a closure of some kind for it. You could also it would be kind of fun to put a clip or something on it. Not there, maybe up there. I don't know. Um, anyway, but I'm going to do eyelets and sorry silk on this. All right. So there you have it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Even me and my silly mistakes. <laughs> um and um, enjoy. Thank you for joining me today and please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel and comments are also very lovely. Thank you so much everybody. Goodbye.